So uh, I'm getting near the end here, uh, and I realize that my time is pretty much up. But um, I think diversity is most certainly a public good which justifies state intervention. Uh, bit, sorry, but uh, is it a pub well, it's a public good, but is it a public good instead of a public bad? This returns us to the question we had at the beginning. Because some people think it's a public bad. Uh, I can recall, uh, uh, I mean, recently at a major conference, uh, it made a big, bit of splash in the news, a, uh, a Dutch political scientist called Abram de Swan, whom some of you probably know, said in the presence of the European Commissioner, a very important personage, uh, in the presence of the European Commissioner in charge of multilingualism, this academic Abram de Swan said that multilingualism was, I quote, a damn nuisance, end of quote. So you, you do get you know, things like this. So some people say, no, it's not, it's not really a good. So how do we do this? Well. At this point, I think this is where we have to work in the future. And we don't have hard proof. We have masses of circumstantial evidence. We don't have hard proof yet. But uh, one thing we have is we can work with the concept of optimal diversity. I didn't want to trouble you with a diagram here, but perhaps you can picture it in your mind. Diversity carries both costs and benefits. I'm not saying that it is costless. It, has, it is costly, right? And if you remember, for those of you who have had economic analysis, costs have a way of behaving, which is very interesting. They, you know, the more of something you have, the more cost you have, right? So cost rises, but it rises at an increasing rate, okay? It becomes each additional unit is more expensive than the previous additional unit. So if you want to think of it, yeah, you can think of it as, as, as a, well, as a curve going like this, right? Rising like this. I should, perhaps I should have done the diagram. Um, now, I believe also that diversity carries benefits. You know, it goes from ethnic restaurants, you know, just like that, or to uh, uh, the possibility, you know, if those other arguments are true, of drawing on a richer store of information and experience to solve problems things which I hope neuroimagery neuro will help us prove in the near future. So benefits also increase with diversity. But again, benefits have a certain way of behaving. Typically, benefits rise, but they rise at a decreasing rate, which means, and you know, well, let me do this with my finger, nothing else. So costs rise like this, benefits rise like this, okay? So at one point, for a while, benefits are higher than costs, but then at one point, costs will overtake the benefits. But for everything which is before that point, benefits are demonstrably higher than costs. And I think we have lots of circumstantial evidence to say that up to a point, and this point is, I think, quite far away, the costs of diversity are lower than the benefits from diversity. And there is somewhere between zero and between the point where costs overtake benefits, where the distance between the benefits curve and the cost curve is biggest. And this is what we call optimal diversity. And optimal diversity is positive. It is non-zero. This is what matters to an economist. It's a positive value. So the, if there is an optimal level of diversity in society, it is certainly not zero. It's not infinite either. It would not be manageable, I think. But it's certainly not zero. And then we can spend a little more time thinking, well, what techniques can we use to increase the level at which uh, uh, optimal diversity is located? Another circumstantial piece of evidence which I think that you know, large-scale quantitative surveys could help us ascertain is the notion of willingness to pay. You can ask people, how much would you be willing for a certain component of diversity to be present in your environment? In the same way as we ask people, you know, uh, how much would you be willing to pay to make sure there is no nuclear waste dump in your backyard? Or if there were one, how much would we need to compensate you to accept it? So to do, it's called willingness to accept. So different ways to assess the value that people place in things. Uh, whenever, and so far only informally, 
we have tried to assess people's willingness to pay for linguistic diversity, we always came up with estimates that were higher than the actual cost of providing that same level of diversity. This goes to show that, again, that the benefits are higher than the costs. So far, it's only circumstantial. I would not, you know, put my, you know, I would not want to make my entire argument dependent on this.